In the last video, we looked at linear functions in the form of y is equal to mx plus b, where m was our slope and b was our y-intercept. And in this video, we're going to look at the effect of positive and negative m on the appearance of a graph. So let's take a second to actually draw out the graphs of two different linear functions. So our first function is f of x is equal to negative 2x plus 1. And our second function is f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So what are the first few things that we can notice about these two functions? Well, in this function, we have a slope of negative 2. Our m is equal to negative 2. And 1 is our y-intercept. In this function, our slope is equal to 2. And our y-intercept is also going to be 1. So these two functions are going to cross the y-axis at the same point, but they have different slopes. Their slopes have the same absolute value, but this is a negative slope and this is a positive slope. So let's actually draw out these two functions onto a plane and see what the effect is of having a negative versus a positive slope. So the first thing that we can do is to determine some x and y values so we can actually plot our graph. So let's see what our y value is when x is equal to negative 1. When x is equal to negative 1, our y value is going to be equal to 3. When x is equal to 0, our y value is going to be 1. When x is equal to 1, our y value is going to be negative 1. When x is equal to 2, we're going to have a y value of negative 3. And when x is equal to 3, we're going to have a y value of negative 5. Now let's do the same thing for our second graph here. And I'm going to do that right here so we have some more space to actually draw our graphs. So for our second function, when x is equal to negative 1, our y value is going to be negative 1. When x is equal to 0, we're going to have a y value of 1. When x is equal to 1, we're going to have a y value of 3. And when x is equal to 2, we're going to have a y value of 5. And let's just see what we get with just these points for now. So if we were to draw out our Cartesian plane, let's do our purple graph first. So when x is equal to negative 1, that's going to be here, we have a y value of 3. So 1, 2, 3. That's going to be a point right here. When x is equal to 0, y is 1. So here x is equal to 0 and here y is equal to 1. So we have a point here. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to negative 1. So that's going to be a point over here. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to negative 3. So that's going to be a point over here. And when x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 5. So that is going to be a point over here. So this graph is going to be a line that looks like this. Now let's do our second graph. So here, when x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 1. So that's going to be a point over here. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. So that's going to be a point here as well. When x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. So that's going to be a point over here. And when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 5. So that's going to be a point over here. So this graph is going to be a line that looks like this. So we can see that when we have a negative slope, in our purple graph, our slope is negative 2. When we have a negative slope, our graph is going to point downwards. We can see that this graph is going downwards, whereas our red graph is going upwards. So that is when we have a positive slope. Our slope here is 2, so we have a slope that is positive, whereas here our slope was negative 2, so we have a gradient which is negative. And let's actually use our formula for determining slope to confirm that we have a slope of 2 for our red graph and negative 2 for our purple graph. So for our purple graph, the way that we can determine our slope is change in y over change in x or rise over run. So let's take two points in our graph. Let's take these two points over here. 
So this is going to be x2, y2, and this is x1, y1. So to determine our change in y values, we do y2 minus y1. So y2 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus y1, which is negative 1. Negative 3 minus negative 1. That's our change in y values. And now to determine our change in x values, our x2 is at x is equal to 2. And our x1 is that x is equal to 1. So 2 minus 1 is our change in x values. So minus 3 plus 1 is equal to minus 2. And 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. So here we have our slope as negative 2. And we know just from our general formula that that is indeed our slope. Our m is negative 2. Now let's try to do the same thing for our red graph and confirm that our slope is indeed 2. So let's take these two points here. This is our x1, y1, and this is our x2, y2. So our change in y over our change in x, let's first do our change in y. So this y is y is equal to 5, and this one is y is equal to 3. So 5 minus 3. And our change in x, well here we have x is equal to 2, and here we have x is equal to 1. So 2 minus 1. And 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So we've confirmed that we have a slope of 2. And we know that that's true from this formula here. Our m is equal to 2. So in summary, what we've learned is that linear functions are going to be functions in which we have either 0 or first degree terms. So our x or our variable, whatever our variable is, is going to be raised to the power of either 0 or 1 when it comes to linear functions. And linear functions are going to look like straight lines. They are going to have a constant slope. The gradient or the change in y over the change in x is going to be constant for linear functions. And the general form that linear functions can be expressed in is the form of y is equal to mx plus b, where m is equal to the slope of our graph and b is equal to the y-intercept. And when we have a positive slope, our graph is going to go in an upwards direction, whereas when we have a negative slope, our graph goes in a downwards direction. And increasing our slope is going to increase the gradient of our graph. We're going to have a steeper and steeper graph for higher slopes.